How can you stay well on a cruise and avoid outbreaks of things like the norovirus, the flu, and the coronavirus? I'm Gary Bemage. This is another of my cruising tips for travelers. I want to talk about how you can make sure that you stay fit and well on a cruise and avoid any of the outbreaks of those viral things like norovirus, flu, or even the coronavirus. First of all, let's take a look at the actual potential risks. Overall, it's important to understand, although it gets lots of publicity, your risk of contracting any of these kind of viral things is the same or even lower than it is on land. However, when these things break out on a ship, partly because of the reporting process, partly because of media, partly because you do have a concentration in one space, it does get a lot of publicity. However, you're not putting yourself necessarily at more risk by going on a cruise, but it is very important that you understand what the risks are and even more importantly, that you know what to do. The risk that you're facing is three potentially highly contagious viral infections, which is the norovirus, which is the stomach and vomiting bug, influenza, which of course most of you are familiar with, which can be pretty serious, and then particularly more topically and certainly getting much more publicity is the coronavirus. What's very important about these is they are very contagious and they do spread really fast and also there is no specific cure for them. So if you get them, it's really about your body fighting them off. So people who are at greater risk are the very young, so ch young children, people with compromised immune systems, and of course people who are slightly more elderly. So it's really understanding that these are very contagious and they can spread very, very easily. So it's really important that you're prepared and you know what to do. Viruses are spread in four key ways. And this again is very important to understand. First of all, coughing and sneezing. So you people who've got the viral infection, when they cough and sneeze, little droplets of water head out into the atmosphere around them and can contain the virus. So particularly if you're close to people within about six feet or so, you could be at risk if they do have it. Secondly is shaking hands. So that's a really common way for people to spread it. So they have the virus on their hands because they're sneezing the hands or whatever, they start shaking hands, it passes to the person, they touch them out their eyes and it spreads that way. Linked to that is if you're touching surfaces which has the virus on and again touching your mouth, your eyes, so you're actually ingesting it. The fourth way, which is common for some of the viruses, is some way coming into contact with some kind of fecal matter. That's often with people who perhaps haven't really washed their hands after going to the bathroom and then touching surfaces or serving utensils or whatever. So those are the four key ways. So really what's important to understand is those are the four ways the virus spreads. So being ready and prepared to take actions against those four is critical. And I'm gonna talk about that shortly in this video. Also, what's really important to understand is one person who has the virus can spread it. So we've seen lots of examples. For example, there was the issue on Diamond Princess where there was many cases of the coronavirus. That appears to have been brought on by one person who had it and then spread it on. Also on land-based, for example, there was one person who'd gone to a conference in Singapore. They'd brought it back. They'd stayed in a chalet with a group of people. They then spread it to those people. So it's very key that it's an individual who can cause the infection to kick off and start. And that's very important as we look at how to prepare and protect yourself. So what do you as a cruiser need to know and be aware of? Well, first of all, it's really important to understand that prevention is best. The best way of avoiding these outbreaks, whether you're on land or at sea, is prevent, prevent, prevent. And secondly, the key thing is to be prepared. So if you do get affected, know exactly what you're gonna do. Those are the most critical things, prevention and being prepared. So what should every cruiser do and be aware of? Now, these are my tips for avoiding and staying safe, and if you do get it, what to do. The first and most important thing of all is don't bring it on board. And there's two people who have responsibility for that. First of all, the cruise lines. Historically, what cruise lines have done is made you fill out a form when you check in, which asks things like, have you been vomiting? Have you been suffering from diarrhea? Have you visited certain countries in recent time? And that's particularly linked to if there's any diseases around. So they have a screening process, which is really a self-regulation process. They're relying on the passengers to really be honest about that. The second thing the cruise lines are doing increasingly is being even stricter. So in 2020 with the outbreak of coronavirus, some cruise lines brought into really strict rules where they said that any crew or passenger that had a Chinese or Hong Kong or Macau passport, for example, weren't even allowed to board the ship. Anyone that had traveled through any of those places wasn't allowed to board the ship or anyone that had been in contact with people from those places weren't allowed on the ship. And of course these evolve and change. So the cruise lines were basically looking at stopping people that were at risk of bringing it on board. 
The other thing that's happened is certain ports have stopped cruise lines embarking and disembarking passengers there to stop people bringing it on or taking it off the ship. And the same has been true of people flying in and out of various places. The other thing that cruise lines have started to do is have actual screening processes. So anyone that they think is at risk, they will do things like check the temperature, see if they have signs of fever. And so they are trying to stop people bringing it on board. Then of course, what is the cruiser's responsibility? Well, a lot of people, as we know, when they fill out those forms, they go, yeah, I've been a bit sick. They don't really fill out the form honestly because they don't want to stop coming on board. As a cruiser, you have a huge responsibility that if you aren't feeling well or you think you're at risk to any of that, whether it's influenza, norovirus, or any of the coronaviruses, you absolutely have to be honest. What I recommend you do if you are feeling ill is contact the cruise line and let them know that you think you're at risk and discuss with them what your options are. As we've seen recently, cruise lines are becoming much more flexible as they understand they need to stop these things coming on board. Historically, what they do, for example, they might just isolate you on board, but they are becoming much more flexible. If you think you're at risk, do not bring it on board, because as we've seen, one person can cause a whole ship to go down with a norovirus, or it can cause people to go on with coronavirus and cause enormous problems. The second area of things you really need to think about is how can you make sure that you avoid catching it once you're on board? So I always assume that someone has brought one of these viruses on board and it's my job to stop getting it. And there's a number of really critical things that you should do. The first of those and the most important of those is wash your hands all the time. Just constantly throughout the day, wash your hands. And one of the tips that I was once given by a captain on board is as you wash your hands, sing happy birthday once or twice, because that's enough time to wash your hands properly. Yes, there are those gels, etc. but washing hands is the fundamental thing to do, just keep washing hands, because if you haven't got the virus on your hand and you're not then touching your mouth or whatever, then you're not gonna catch it. The second thing that I always do is I try and avoid using any of the public toilets. If I need to use the bathroom, I'll go to my cabin. Yes, it's a little bit less convenient. However, you just don't know what people are doing within those bathrooms. If you do use one of the public toilets, wash your hands, and then use a tissue or something to open the door. Because of course, it's all well and good washing your hands, but you're touching the door, someone has, hasn't washed their hands and the virus is there. The next thing to do is avoid touching as much as you can surfaces which could have the virus on. So handrails and that kind of stuff. So just try and avoid that. Or if you have been touching lots of those, wash your hands. The other thing to do is don't shake people's hands. A lot of cruise ships have that as an ongoing thing because of norovirus. Don't shake people's hands give them a nod or whatever, but just don't high five, shake hands, just don't do it. If you do sneeze, really important, carry around with you tissues or what some people recommend, sneeze into your elbow, for example, so you're not getting it onto your hands. But the best thing to do is try and catch it in a tissue. Also think about surfaces in your cabin that could be an issue. The one to really watch out for actually, which is also true in hotel rooms, is the remote control. Those generally aren't cleaned as often and they have lots of nooks and crannies. What some people do is actually take a little plastic bag and they put it over the remote so that they're never coming in contact with it. So basically think about anything that's gonna bring you and make you touch the virus, avoid. The other thing that I actually do, which I strongly recommend you consider, is avoid the buffet. Eat in the dining room and get room service. The buffet is where people are touching lots of equipment, they're touching plates, they're touching the very serving things. That is where I think is a huge issue. When I've been on ships that have had a norovirus outbreak, I think it's connected to the buffet. Like I have been on ships where it's broken out, I haven't eaten the buffet and I've managed to avoid it. Of course, I've used the other things. So I strongly recommend if you are or possibly can avoid using the buffet or when you go to the buffet, be really disciplined about it. So I tend to use buffets where actually on, on ships where the crew serves the food rather than passengers do it. A lot of people ask me about masks. There's very mixed views around whether masks do or don't work. One of the key things is particularly if you have the virus or you have a cold or cough, is actually wearing a mask helps protect other people. But of course, a mask is a possibility, particularly when you're in crowded spaces. The next point is what to do if you think you've got it. Now, what you should absolutely do is go to your cabin and call the medical center. Don't go and visit the medical center. Get into your cabin. So if you think you've got norovirus, you've got upset stomach, you're vomiting, or you feel that you might have the coronavirus, you've got the, the temperatures, etc. go to your cabin and call the medical services. The medical center normally will provide services for free if they think you've got any of these viral infections. They'll also normally provide medications for free. So it's best to phone up and say, look, I think I've got this 
what, what should I do? And you'll normally find they'll ask you to stay in your cabin and they will come and see you. But as soon as you think you've got to go to your cabin and alert the medical center. What happens if there is an outbreak or perhaps you've contracted it? A couple of really critical things that you should be aware of. If it's norovirus, you're normally going to be quarantined in your cabin until you've had at least 24 hours after your last upset stomach or vomiting. So that could be a couple of days or longer. If it's something as we've seen with the coronavirus, they are actually quarantining people for up to two weeks in their cabin. Very important, you must follow the quarantine. I have been on ships where they have thrown people off at the next port because they didn't follow the quarantine and they had norovirus. They are really, really strict about it because it, that, that's the way of stopping it spreading. So accept that you're gonna have to have that. So what should you then do? One of the things I recommend you do is go prepared. Now, through my many, many years of traveling for business, I used to being stranded because of flights or storms or whatever. So I always travel really prepared. So I always take with me, for example, a couple of weeks of prescription medication. So I know that actually even if I'm stranded for up to two weeks, I have enough to cover myself. And I also have a little first aid kit where I have you know, headache pills and antidiarrheal rebooster things and antidiarrheal medicines. So that also tides me over if I have any of those things. I also always travel with lots of entertainment ready. So I have my iPad loaded up with shows, I have eBooks there. So actually if I am stranded, I have stuff. And that's just from years of hanging around at airports or being kind of stuck for a couple of days. So I always have enough stuff that's gonna keep me busy. I also make sure that my mobile phone has a roaming plan. I actually, for example, I've signed up to one which is actually giving me free roaming in most of the countries in the world within my minutes, but make sure you've got a good roaming plan so at least you can be calling people or using your data, because often if you can find you might be in port during the day, for example. Another thing that you may want to consider now, this is pretty extreme, is bear in mind, if you can find your cabin, think about the kind of cabin you may want to be confined in. So if you think about people who are on Diamond Princess, for example, for two weeks, those people who had an inside cabin were stuck in an inside cabin. Those people who had a balcony cabin or a suite had much more space. Now this could be quite an extreme way of justifying going with the balcony, but certainly it would make a massive difference if you do have that kind of cabin. So that's one thing you may want to think about moving forwards, is whether that's something you want to almost build in or do as a sort of insurance policy if you are ever confined to your cabin. The other thing, of course, is make sure you have good travel insurance. Now, if you do have a big outbreak, such as the coronavirus, the cruise line will normally make lots of plans to help. But if you have other illnesses, influenza, or you perhaps have the norovirus and you actually end up having to disembark the ship or whatever because you're feeling that ill and poorly you need to go to a, a land-based hospital, make sure you've got really strong travel insurance because you're probably not gonna be covered by the cruise line in those situations and it gives you much more flexibility. Another great advantage or thing to be think about is if you've actually booked through the cruise line or you've booked with a travel agent who've arranged all of your arrangements, it's probably gonna be much easier if these things happen because it's gonna be one call or one email and someone else can sort out all of the hassles of redoing flights, transfers, that kind of stuff. So that's something to also think about. These are my tips and advice in how to prepare for it, deal with it, and make sure that you have the greatest chance of staying fit and healthy on a cruise. I have many more videos packed full of cruising tips and advice. So why don't you watch another one of those right now?